Right now, you're looking at the most powerful enemy in the Corral region, the Tonberry King. And I'm using a material that is extremely powerful because it can completely stop it in its tracks. This is the Tide material, and it's one of the most broken material that you'll find. You can get this when you do Pirate's Quest and get a high score. You just have to earn 15,000 points during this game in order to get it. Now, the Tide material is going to be really, really useful for you in your fights because it's going to give you access to Haste, which is going to fill up your ATB bar a lot faster during a fight. Really cool one to use. You're going to be able to access Slow, which is going to slow down the enemy from being able to use their special attacks. And then you have Stop, which which you can see in this footage literally just stops the enemy right in its track. And this is just one of the many things that you don't want to miss in the Corral region, which is my favorite region for many reasons. Let's get into it. Now in this video, we'll be covering everything from Costa de Sol to outside of Costa de Sol. We'll be covering some things in Mount Corral. We'll also be covering North Corral. We'll be skipping the Gold Saucer, which takes place in Chapter 8. And we'll be covering all the things you may have missed in South Corral. Basically everything in the Corral region minus the Gold Saucer and main story stuff. So one of the weapons that you should be getting for red in Costa de Sol is the Silver Collar, which gives you the ability Chilling Roar. This will allow you to retaliate with ice shards whenever you're hit by an attack. It also charges the Vengeance Gauge when he Counter-Strike lands. And you can see that it's completely broken because when the enemies attack us, they get hit with ice. And now in order to get this, all you have to do is just get rank 3 in the free-for-all mode in Run Wild. And all you have to do is basically get first place in the minigame Run Wild with Red, which actually really isn't too hard. It's, it's really fun. It's basically Rocket League with dogs and scientific created creatures. So while you're doing the chapter 6 story and doing mini games, you're also going to be getting vouchers for completing the mini games, like where you have to find the cactars and other things like that. In order to progress with the story in chapter 6, you have to at least buy one beach outfit for the character. You don't have to get all of them, but you just need one. And later on in the game, you can actually come back to the beachwear vendor. You can go ahead and buy the outfits you were missing. For example, I have this outfit right over here, the ocean chocobo outfit, which I forgot to buy for Cloud, and I'm just spending 5000 Gil and I got it versus getting it during the story. So it's never missed out, but you can have it. So I just wanted to point that out to you guys. Now, something you don't want to miss is hitting that subscribe button down below and turning on notifications. It seriously helps the channel and you'll know when I upload my next video. So go for it. In Costa de Sol, there is this place called the Card Carnival. Do not ignore this area at all because when you do come here, you get a bunch of challenges. So basically, these challenges are going to be thinking about how you play Queen's Blood. Now, the cool part about doing all of these challenges, you're going to be getting reward cards for this. Now, these cards are going to be pretty cool and have a lot of unique abilities compared to the other cards that you used to have. So make sure to go ahead and beat all of these. And if you all really do want a Queen's Blood Guide Part 2, as you can see in my top right corner, I am Blood Champion. Let me know and post it in the comments that you want Queen's Blood Guide. Okay, let's keep moving on and hopefully you can grab some cards from here. By the way, right next to the card carnival is going to be the Queen's Blood Vendor. So go ahead and check out what she has has in her shop to see if there are any new decks in your game. Why not add new cards to your collection? I say this tip in every region because it's extremely important. Always go into the weapon vendor shop that has accessories because they may have a weapon you may have missed and they also may have an accessory that is going to be able to have more material slots than your previous one with better stats and these items you may buy from these shops may actually have a much more enhanced version that you can craft. So just make sure you're paying attention to that because you can enhance these even further. Always check weapon and vendor shops. Something that you should do when you arrive in Costa de Sol is head over to the test drive event, which is pretty much the front of this hotel desk. And they're running an event where you just have to get on a wheelie and run across town. So I did hop on one and I found areas that were really open and I just drove back and forth with Cloud because after a certain amount of steps, you go ahead and turn that in right over here. As you can see, you'll get something known as the pedometer pit. And this is exactly what it does. It grants one gill for every hundred steps taken. Fun Thing that you might want to do is maybe go afk with this and rake your character run into a wall that way you can get gill while you're afk in the game i'm just saying that might just be a great afk farm keep that in mind when you're done with chapter six you'll then get access to chapter seven which is going to allow you to come to the outside world finally 
with Yuffie joining your party, which is going to start allowing you to do world intel missions. Now let's talk about some side quests that are available. One of the first ones is called Bodybuilders in a Bind, and this one is going to be responsible for building up your relationship with Tifa. Really important in Chapter 7, by the way, because later on in Chapter 8, it's going to matter who has the higher relationship. So if you're focusing on Tifa, this is perfect. Pretty much, you just beat up a bunch of monsters. And then afterwards, when you're done, you'll be able to do this crunch off in this training gym. And the reward for that is going to be the Chakra Materia. And the benefit of Chakra Materia is that it restores a certain percentage of HP that the user has lost. Meaning the lower your HP is, the more that it restores. And it can go all the way up to level 5 to do 40% of HP damage taken. This next quest is really important. It's called the Saga of the Seaside Inn, and it gets very confusing. So basically, you talk to Johnny and it's going to be building up your relationship with Yuffie as you can see she's next to you at the start of this quest and essentially you do these tasks for a bunch of Johnnies that are roaming around the entire area of the map but eventually you'll hit a spot in the quest where Johnny is talking about having to go to the desert and he's just standing there and you just don't know how to proceed further because if you swim you're going to bump into a bunch of debris and you can't proceed further so whenever you reach this point of the quest in chapter 7 it actually requires you to be all the way at chapter 9 to complete, you're going to have to take out the classified intel of the southern Corral region in order to bring this back to Johnny to complete this quest. But when you're able to do that, you'll receive a specific Queen's Blood card called the J Squad, which is really interesting as a card. And you'll also will get access to Johnny's treasure trove. And you'll finally understand what on earth these little items you're getting and treasures you're finding in the game are for. And if you get all the treasures in the game, you unlock this chest that's right over here. Big mystery, but now you know that that unlocks this. This next quest is called Rendezvous in Costa de Sol. And it's going to strengthen your relationship with Aerith. So if you're focused Focusing on building that with Aerith for chapter 8, this is the one you want to do. Essentially, you just go around, do a bunch of tasks with Aerith, but the reward for this is going to be the Art of Swordplay Volume 2, which is going to give Cloud 10 SP points. So if you're trying to fill out Cloud's folios, this is the one to do. This is the Healing Carcanet, and what it does is it increases the effectiveness of healing items, spells, and abilities, which is a really good accessory to have. Now, in order to find this, all you have to do is head over to the Cape Del Amor area and then make your way in the water, go around this entire dock until you find the entryway there. Go inside of the dock and then find a chest all the way located back here in order to get this item. So this is something you can get right out of Costa de Sol. One of the first things you could do is do the Divine Intel 1, the Alexander Sanctuary Alpha. You could then go ahead and fight Alexander at Chali with it being powered down by 1. It's not too bad, just make sure to assess it, go after its weaknesses, but it's definitely doable not all the way down because you won't have access to any of these other sanctuaries till later on in Chapter 9. So there are a few materia that Chadley has in his research shop for completing the world intel. One is going to be the gravity materia, which is interesting because it's going to deal damage based on the target's maximum HP. So for example, if an enemy has 300 total HP, the gravity spell will deal 15% or 45 HP, which means if the target is then below 45 HP, it'll kill them. That's like the best example to explain how it works. Next up on the list is the HP Absorption Materia. This allows you to recover HP when you unleash any attack of linked materia type. For this example, I paired it on a Poison Materia. That way I can do bio damage and over time on the enemy while also allowing myself to heal. I'm really curious what you all would pair this with, so please let me know exactly what you'd pair your HP Absorption Materia with so you can output the most healing. Next up on the list is the ATB Boost Materia. This is going to double your ATB when activated and unfortunately it cannot be used continuously and the more you level it up the faster it's going to refresh. So for example when I was battling with Tifa you can see that I then saw it at the bottom so it's just L1 plus R1 activates it and you can see Tifa's ATB going up. It's really OP to use when you need ATB. And the final one is the Auto Weapon Ability Materia. Now this one is really interesting. So for this example, I threw it on Aerith and during my fight, I'm just standing here waiting for Aerith to use something. She's not using the weapon ability that the current weapon she has initially had. What she's doing is using any weapon ability that she may have learned in total, which is really good because they will utilize everything in their kit that they have learned. So 
I just thought that was really interesting. Just don't confuse this with auto unique ability. Weapon ability material? Phenomenal. Throw it on anyone and they'll just start using all their abilities. One of the places where you're going to get some good stuff is going to be the Moogle Emporium that's located right over here on your map. Once you round up all the Mooglets, you're going to have access to Fire Materia Earrings, which is going to give you a free fire spell without taking up a Materia slot, just an accessory slot. And you're going to have Sharpshooter's Companion Volume 2, which is for Barrett and Secrets of the Ninja Volume 1, which is for your new party member, Yuffie. Get these so you can have more SP so you can learn more skills in the character's folios. If you don't have enough Moogle Medals, just remember that you can farm Moogle Medals at the activation towers on the map as well as in any cache locations. I was also told that when you break boxes and then save in front of where they spawn you can reload your game and apparently they show up so keep that in mind when you're farming to make it even easier someone try this out and let me know if that works in the comments below when you continue through the story in chapter 7 you're gonna make your way up the corral mountain and be separated from your parties so it's gonna be cloud with Aerith here now you're going to find a chest in this location and it's going to give you the wizard rod and the wizard rod is going to have an ability called lustrous shield. Now the cool part about this is it's basically like a flower shield that keeps enemies at bay and it'll stop projectiles coming at you. You can see in this gameplay I have enemies rushing towards me and they bang into the shield causing it to be blocked. It's not 100% perfect but it does a decent job especially the fact that Aerith is vulnerable to a lot of attacks when you are controlling her. If you move a little further up by the water you'll see a green glow materia in this area this is going to be the enervation materia and the enervation materia is really cool because you can use it to cast d protect which basically lowers the enemy's physical defense and it also you can use d shell at level two which is going to lower the enemy's magic defense this is going to be very important as you continue your story because you'll start to deal with enemies that are casting protect and shell on themselves what this will do is remove the buff and you'll be able to lower their defenses for magic or physical after this you're going to have to deal with the entire storyline for Mount Corel, which is very, very big. Now, I won't be covering what happens in the storyline for Mount Corel at all. We're just going to move forward to the part where you go through that entire area, which will bring you into this location. When you're at the settlement in the North Corel region, make sure that you're going ahead and checking out the weapon and vendor person here, because if you miss anything, maybe in the main story while you were going through Mount Corel, you'll be able to find it at this weapon shop vendor. Now, I want you to pay attention to the side quest that you get in this area called of robed men and ransoms this one is going to be with red initially and for doing this you're going to be getting a red warrior volume 2 sp item and also building your relationship with red when you go into the side quest you're going to enter into a locked area and by entering into it you're actually going to be able to find a red weapon known as the amethyst collar which is going to give you the ability supernal fervor this is going to speed up the party's atb bar so it's really good to have not only do you get red's weapon here but if you continue moving further in this area and you reach this specific location you're actually going to find another materia known as the binding materia and this materia is really good because it allows the wielder to use up to three spells that limit the target's ability to attack cloud this is going to include sleep at level one which basically causes the target to fall asleep until woken up by a physical attack silence which doesn't let the enemy cast a magic spell and level three berserk which is going to increase the amount of damage the target it receives but also it's going to increase the amount of damage the target dishes out it's kind of a trade-off one over here to use that when you start chapter 9 kate sith is going to join your party and believe it or not kate sith has an extremely powerful materia known as the magnify materia so you can go ahead take that off kate sith and put it on anyone you may want so for this example i'm equipping this onto cloud now depending on whatever material you attach to it it's going to magnify that so for example i'm in battle here and i'm fighting these enemies if I use a fire magic attack, it's going to deal fire magic attack to all the enemies. Same thing if I use an ice attack. As you can see, it's going to hit multiple enemies. Not only can you use that for attacks, but it also works for when you want to buff your party. As you can see in this clip here, we're using haste on the entire party when we do it. So it's not just us, but the whole party speeding up their ATB. So this is going to be really useful for taking out groups of enemies, or if you constantly want to buff your entire team in one go. 
Now listen, I totally understand that there are players who basically say, hey, just do everything and you don't have to watch these videos. But there are also players out there who just want to know the bare minimum in order to get things done. And one of those bare minimum things that you need to get done to get cool stuff is going to be the excavation intel. These are going to give you access to a bunch of transmuter chips that let you have better items, as well as giving you special side quest items that are going to be extremely important. One of these excavation intels will lead to a transmuter chip called the bird trap which is going to be fully necessary to do for a side quest that actually unlocks in chapter 9. This side quest is called Missing Mr. Birdie. This side quest is going to be for strengthening your relationship with Barrett, but the important part about this entire thing is that you will receive a level boost materia from the side quest. And level boost material is going to be really important for increasing the level of the link material by one. See that? My revival material can now do a rise. Pretty cool. Two important combat simulators that I think you should definitely do is going to be the Coral Battle Intel Sand Slitherers, which is going to involve you doing the Fiend Intel, where you have to defeat the Dune Worms and defeating the Blade Fins. Make sure you're assessing all these monsters, by the way, during these. This will end up giving you the Strength Up Materia, and the Strength Up Materia is just going to make your attacks be a lot more powerful. The other combat challenge that you should be doing is the Badlands Beast one, as you have to take out Fiend Intel for the Heliopora Terepi Cult and defeating the Silver Chimera. My pronunciation may be horrible, but that's what you have to do. So make sure to do those Fiend Intels, and that'll reward you with the very rare AP Up Materia. And this is the second one you'll be getting in the game. And AP Up Materia is going to be really important for equipping it onto your character. That way you can level up the other materia it's linked to a lot faster. It is a very good materia in the game to use. Now, there is also an enemy skill called self-destruct that you can get from doing biological intel at any cost. And the prerequisites for this is basically having your enemy skill materia at 3 star, assessing 25 out of 25 enemies in the Corral region, which by now if you're doing a lot of the side quests and different things like that, you've most likely have this done, and defeating the classified foe in the last region. And if you follow our videos, you most likely have already done that. This will then bring you into a fight against the exact same classified foe from the Junon region, the Mind Flayer, and when you destroy him, you're then going to get the monster skill, Self-Destruct. Now, essentially what Self-Destruct does is it consumes 2 ATB to deal a large amount of damage to the enemies around you, and it also takes out Cloud in the process. So you can kind of think of it as a good finisher when fighting an enemy, and I clearly did not use it properly during this fight where I wanted to show it off, but it's a great way to end a combo, most likely on a boss or a single enemy. You can always just Phoenix down or res Cloud. It's, it's not that crazy, or anyone that uses this. So for doing the Phenomenon Intel 1 Treasure Projector G, getting the max score will give you another Crescent Moon Charm, which basically will just reduce damage taken while not actively controlled in battle. For doing Phenomenon Intel number 2 and getting the max prize, you'll be getting yourself Item Master Materia Earrings, which is basically a free materia that lets you increase the efficacy of items. This is exactly the same functioning as an Item Master Materia. This will allow you to save a materia slot on your character and you could just put it under the earring spot. I also wanted to point out that you will not be able to do Phenomenon Intel 3 and 4. They will not show up until after you're done with Chapter 12. So just keep that in mind. There's nothing you can do to unlock it early. Trust me, I wasted a lot of time and tried. There is another Moogle Emporium in South Corral. And this one's actually going to have different items, such as the Healing Materia earrings, which will replace your Healing Materia itself, as well as Swordplay Volume 4, which is going to give Cloud 10 SP, and Fortunes Untold Volume 2, which is going to be for Kate Sith. And this is going to give Kate Sith 10 SP. Of course, the biggest intel to do is going to be the classified intel, or as I like to call it, the secret boss of the area, called Heavy Lies the Crown, which is going to be the Tonberry King. Just don't forget, the only way for this to show up is by doing your expedition intels. Basically, unlock the excavation intels, and as you move further, we'll reveal the classified intel. Now, this fight's really fun because this boss can one-shot you, so you have to keep your distance. It can also summon minions that can one-shot you. Overall, this is an insane fight, and you're going to need to complete this fight in order to finish up that earlier Johnny quest that we talked about previously in the video. So make sure to do this, and at this point, you're pretty much done with the entire Corral region. So make sure to go ahead and click on this video over here to see what else you can do in the game.